What's up guys, this is Chad with Living the Van Life up here in the North Cascade Mountains of Washington State. I've got ourselves miles and miles down a dirt road into a dead end canyon. Got a nice secluded camp spot along a creek here. And it's gonna be a perfect spot to cook a meal over a campfire. Kick back and just enjoy some van life. Welcome aboard the adventure guys. Let's go get camp set up. So I use these orange blocks all the time in my van. In fact, they travel everywhere with me. They've made a couple appearances and videos and people are always really curious as to what these orange blocks are for when I stick them under my tire. Well, these in fact here are leveling blocks. I use these blocks to shore up underneath my tires and get my van level. That makes for comfortable sleep at night and it just makes it much easier for living van life out here in the backcountry when your vehicle is actually level. And voila, just like that, the van's all leveled up here in our camp spot. Like I said, to me it's just important to have the van level. It makes things much more comfortable and it's definitely important for a good night's sleep. So when it comes to living in my van full time and coming out here in the backcountry and doing my camping, one of the key components to making that possible is my rooftop storage box. And inside of here, I carry my camp chair, I carry my camp table, I carry a lot of different uh, utilities that I need for cooking in the Dutch oven like the tripod, my lid handle. Also up here is my fire pit that I carry everywhere with me. Inside my fire pit in the storage bag I also carry my 10 inch Dutch oven. Back here in the back I have a tote that has tire chains, it's got a recovery rope, it's also got a spare alternator in case I'm out on the road and that goes dead, and a couple of other spare parts. When I'm out fishing, then I do carry my inflatable boat up here, my waders, my wading boots, my rod, my net, my flippers, etc. And all of that fits in here. So this rooftop storage is key to being full-time living in my van, but yet have the space to come out here in the backcountry and do what all you guys enjoy here in the videos. Once I've got everything that I need for the camp, then I push all the heavier items towards the back. That's important because here on my Westphalia, I've got the pop top. So I need as little weight in this box as possible so that I can pop my top. Well, here I am in the upstairs portion of my camper van. Now that's one of the extra added bonuses of the Volkswagen Westfalia camper van is the fact that they installed this pop top. And essentially what it does is it takes a compact vehicle and it opens it up 
so you can stand up here inside your van. The extra added bonus of that, when you're out here in the wilderness, you can see that the canvas here unzips, lets in a ton of fresh air, a ton of light, while keeping the bugs out. And the fact that I am six foot, six foot one, I can stand here and not even touch the ceiling here. It just makes it nice for being out here in the woods. Now one thing that I will add is the fact that I do a lot of urban stealth camping. So when I'm in town, I do not pop my top because that is a dead giveaway that somebody's camping in their van. So in the wilderness, top popped up. In town, top stays down. Typically, I have the bed installed here. I have the bed currently removed because I use this area up here for storage even when the top is down. Normally, a bed folds back to here. There's a crawl space here where you can crawl up from underneath and it sleeps two people comfortably up here on top. All while down below where the couch folds out, you sleep two more people. So that is a total of four people that can sleep here in this compact vehicle. Well, now moving down here to the downstairs, this is my main living space. Now what sets the Westphalias aside from the standard van again is the fact that Westphalia actually built in all of this cabinetry into their camper van. Back here in the back, I've built separate shelves here for all of my clothes storage. Down below here, I've got my Battleborn lithium ion batteries installed down below. Inside here, I've got all sorts of storage for food and different items that I need. This here obviously is my couch, but this couch also folds down into my bed. So if we take this and fold this out, all of the bedding folds down and that is where I sleep on a regular basis. So normally in this space here, you will find the factory installed refrigerator. However, I've gone ahead and I've removed the refrigerator and here inside this cabinet, I have custom built shelves along here to maximize storage. I have mugs and cups. I've got my jet boil. I've got my solo stove, small cooker. I've got extra drinks, paper towels. I've got bowls up here and plates. This is my eight inch Dutch oven here. I also have a 10 inch skillet stored there in the back. Right here on the left is my auxiliary tank for my diesel heater. So this provides the fuel for the heater that keeps me warm in the winter time. And the key to all of this is maximizing every cubic inch of storage in such a compact spot. Also back here at the back of the van sitting above the bed, this is where the factory installed air conditioning unit once set. I hadn't used the air conditioning unit the whole entire time that I've owned the van and it was not functional. So I went ahead and removed the air conditioning unit and converted that space into very, very usable storage. And I keep jackets and sweatshirts up in that spot and accessible from the rear hatch is more storage for parts and tools. And because I did remove my factory fridge from its original spot, I do have installed here an angle fridge freezer combo. And this is absolutely key for coming out and doing my backwoods camping and cooking because this stores ice, frozen foods, refrigerated foods, everything that you'd possibly need in a fridge or a freezer. And a great thing is, is it runs completely off of my 12 volt auxiliary battery system. If we jump inside here, we can see this is all my cold food storage. This is my freezer portion of it. So it'll even keep ice frozen here, but very, very handy here inside van life. Also here under the rear couch that folds into the bed, there's lots of storage down underneath here. This is where I keep my spare pants. It's also where I keep my wilderness tools like my hatchet, my knives, etc. Tools go down underneath there. And as a bonus feature, like I mentioned, the diesel heater, if we look at this vent here, this is not a factory installed vent. This is where the hot air comes from for the diesel heater. And I've installed the diesel heater right inside this portion down underneath. And that is what provides me plenty and plenty of heat when temperatures get well below freezing. Well, that gives you guys a little bit of a slice of what it takes to live in a Volkswagen Westfalia. 
there's certainly a lot more that goes into it, but I just wanted to keep this simple and straight to the point. I have been living in my van off and on over the years since 2011. And if I'm not on a plane traveling somewhere for a film job, then I'm here sleeping in the van and it's been every single night since October of 2018, living full time here in this small Volkswagen Westfalia. One of my favorite things to do is to get out here a few times a week, get out into the wilderness, escape the city, and create some content for you guys and bring you guys out here on these van adventures. At this point, the light is fading fast. It's time to get a fire started, and get it warming up, so that we can cook ourselves a meal out here in the backwoods. So one thing that I do store here in my van and I keep with me on a regular basis is a little tin that is made up of some cotton balls that I have rolled around in some Vaseline. These make excellent fire starters. Just cotton balls on their own, they actually burn fairly well. But then you add Vaseline to them and they burn exceptionally well. I usually use two of them here to get my fire started. What I do is I pull one of them out and then I just take the cotton ball and just kind of spread it apart. Get it kind of flat like so. Then I lay one of them down there in the bottom. I take a second one. And one thing that I've learned is to just find a small stick and just attach the cotton ball to the stick, just like that. Because if you light that cotton ball and it's sticking to your fingers, it's really hard to get off your fingers while it's burning.
know a lot of you wonder how I produce my videos. I am indeed the only one out here filming my videos. A lot of you ask how many people I have in my crew, but indeed it's just me and myself, which is part of this dream come true of being a professional photographer and filmmaker because here on my YouTube channel, I get to realize that dream, bringing you guys out here and creating films of my adventures out into the backcountry. It's a lot of time on the road, on the go. At the end of the day, I'm out on the road and I edit those videos, which can be a bit of a challenge trying to find a spot to work because it does take eight to 10 hours, sometimes a lot more in front of a computer to edit this. One of the ways that I overcome that is by going to coffee shops when I'm out on the road and I've got a lot of footage that I gotta work with. I can set up shop, I can get some time out of the van, keep my computer charged in a coffee shop. For those of us that live the nomad style, this is something that you should consider. That anytime you go to a coffee shop and you're on public Wi-Fi, you're actually susceptible to quite a bit of security risks. All the private information that you've got stored on your computer like passwords, login information, bank account information, credit card information, all of that becomes a security risk when you open yourself up onto a public Wi-Fi, whether it is a coffee shop, a rest area, a campground, you're susceptible to hackers getting in there and getting your personal information. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes into play, which is Surfshark. And Surfshark is a VPN, or in other words, a virtual private network. Basically what a VPN like Surfshark does is it allows you to sign in as if you're on the internet in a number of different countries. And that creates a middleman and a security barrier between you, your information, and anybody else that might want to get at that. One of the other things that it does is when you're signing into streaming services like Netflix, let's say for instance, you can sign in as if you're in uh, England or Australia or a number of other different countries and you actually get to access what Netflix shows are available in that particular country. You're opened up to a whole library of new Netflix stuff. So not only are you creating yourself a security barrier for your private information, you're also getting access to loads more entertainment for online streaming. So if you want both protection and freedom online, check the link in the description and use promo code LTVL. It not only gives you a whopping 83% off the regular price, but also three months of service totally free. Honestly, it's sponsorships like this. It puts gas in my tank. It keeps my van maintained so I can get out here in the backcountry and bring you guys along. All right. This water's ready, it's boiling, it's time to get cooking.
for this evening's meal I'm going to cook with the 8 inch Stansport Dutch oven looking for more of that personalized size meal which this little 8 incher is perfect for that
<laughs> yes, indeed. Shrimp over a campfire. It's pretty hard to get any better than that. Well, if there has ever been an experimental meal here at Living the Van Life, I gotta say, this is definitely one of those meals. However, it does actually look pretty delicious. Oh man. That's delicious. That really is. Like I said, this dish was 100% completely experimental. But sometimes when you bend the rules and you think outside the box, you end up with actually a pretty good meal. Many times you can surprise yourself when you do that. Many times what I do when I come up with an idea for a meal to cook over a campfire out here in the backcountry is I surf the web and I come up with some recipes that look interesting and then I bend them here and there and I kind of make them my own. That was certainly this recipe here but what a really good dish.
Hmm. Here we are, posted up in the van, enjoying this meal. The door is open, the fire is still burning outside, and that creek is trickling by just a few feet from the van. I'm going to finish up this wonderful meal and then I'm going to make my way out to the campfire. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Do a little bit of stargazing because it's still a very clear late summer night. And I expect the stars should be out in full force. Ready for bed, pup? Huh? You ready for bed? Yeah. Come on. Watch out. my side of the bed. That's my side of the bed. Come on. Come on, come right here. Come on. Come on. It's definitely that time of night. Lola's already made herself at home here inside the van. <laughs> Anyways, this is how cozy a Volkswagen Westfalia camper van can actually be. It's small, it's compact, but to be honest with you, some of the best night sleep that I've ever had in my entire life have been right here in this bed. There's been countless adventures all over the western United States here in this van. Some of the best memories that I have are in some of the most amazing spots. I'm gonna hunker down for the night, get another good night's sleep out here in the back country, living a little bit of van life.
that about does it for this here van adventure. We're making our way down out of the mountains and off to find the next adventure. I'd like to give a special thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Keep in mind guys, it's sponsors like Surfshark that are important to continue to put gas in my tank, keep me out on the road longer so that I can keep bringing you guys content on a regular basis. So I appreciate your guys' patience for that as well. I'd like to invite you guys to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that is what's going to notify you anytime videos are uploaded. Don't forget to like, make sure and leave your comments in the comments section down below and share it with anybody you know that you think might be interested in this content because that is what gets these videos out to the masses. Thanks again guys, I appreciate all of your guys' support. There's been amazing growth on the channel here recently and I can't wait to get into some winter camping videos. All right guys, I'm out of here. Peace out, keep on trucking.